This is Vani Hudson from FixedByVani.com, and today we're going to talk about four hidden Windows 10 features that nobody is talking about. Let's go. About a year ago, my wife bought me my favorite gift ever. It's something that I've always wanted, and it's an AK100. It's a digital audio codec made by a company called iRiver, and it's expensive. It's for audio files. And it does one thing and it does it well. It plays high resolution, high fidelity audio. But that's also part of the problem. It does one thing. I can't send text messages. I can't watch videos. And as some might see that as a liability, I saw it as a a great thing because I didn't want to do those other things. And it means the engineering is purely focused on one thing, which is playing back audio. Well, A few weeks after um, using the device, I discovered that there was Bluetooth functionality built in. Now, of course, Bluetooth, the audio quality isn't going to be as great, but my point is that there was a hidden feature that I discovered that just made usability, my user experience, more enjoyable. And that's kind of what we have with Windows 10. I'm going to show you four features that are hidden, and when I share them with you, you're not going to say, wow, like that's amazing, like that's the best thing I've ever seen or heard in my life. But it's going to make your experience with Windows 10 a little more enjoyable. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So the first hidden feature in Windows 10 is pretty cool. You now get native PDF printing. That's right. Now you don't have to download third-party utilities like Qt PDF or Primo PDF or Foxit PDF printer. You can now print to PDF by default. It's built into the operating system. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and open up Microsoft Word. I'm running uh, Microsoft Word 2016. All right, so um, that's okay with me. Okay, whatever. Let's just go ahead and Um, I don't know what all this stuff is. Let's just open a blank document. Okay. Looks like I haven't activated. Anyway, let's say I have a document in here. All right. Whatever, right? (laughs) Now, if I want to print this, I can go to File, Print, and you'll see I've got my printer here, which is my physical printer. But if you look in the list, you should also see a Microsoft Print to PDF option, which is pretty daggone cool, if you ask me. Because now if I click this and I click Print, it's going to print to the PDF instead. It's going to ask me, what do I, what do I want to name the file? So I'll just name it uh, I love PDF printers. <laughs> it's kind of lame, but can't think of anything more exciting right now. Click save. And in a few moments, it'll save uh, the PDF. Now, if you want to take a look at it, you can, um, you know, minimize the screen and open up the location. Um, Where the heck did I save that file? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, there it is on my desktop. Okay. (laughs) So I can double click this. Now, of course, since I don't have have a PDF reader on my computer, it's not going to um, open. Well, actually, it looks like I can read it in Microsoft Edge. So if I click OK, Microsoft Edge, Microsoft's newest web browser, will automatically parse the PDF and read it. And here it is. Here's the PDF. Of course, I could use Adobe Reader, Foxit Reader, or whatever, but the point is you can print a PDF by default. Pretty cool. Let's look at the next thing you can do. So in Windows 8 and 8.1, we received a new ability, something that we could never do before, and that is we could press the Windows key with the letter S and take a screenshot the screenshot would automatically, it would automatically save a screenshot to our uh, photo, our pictures folder, our pictures library to be more more precise. 
Sorry, I'm, I'm having a hard time talking today. <laughs> uh, and so, yes, Windows Key Plus S would submit a screenshot to your pictures library. But that's really all you could do when it came to taking screenshots and that sort of thing. Well, in Windows 10, we now have the ability to take delayed screenshots. Let me show you what I mean. So if we click on the little Windows icon, we can actually load the new and improved snipping tool. So I, I click the snipping tool right here. And notice now there's a little delay section, delay snip creation. If I click the down arrow, I can choose one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, or five seconds. Now you may recall, let me switch over to my Windows 7 box. I'm going to load the snipping tool here just for comparison so you can see the difference. Notice the snipping tool here doesn't have that little delay feature. It's just new and cancel, right? But of course, on Windows 10, we knew how this delay we have this delay thing. So I click delay. Let's say I put three seconds, and then I click new. It's going to actually wait three seconds before it takes a screenshot. It did. I don't know if you caught that, but it actually it did wait before it took the screenshot. It didn't submit it right away. So that's kind of cool. What about number three? The third coolest, I mean coolest, 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 coolest Windows 10 feature is you can now copy and paste in the command prompt. I know, right? You're like, ooh, big deal. Who cares? Like, why do people care about the command prompt and copying and pasting? Ooh. Well, it's actually pretty freaking cool. So for people that use the command prompt like me. So for example, if I go to the start button and uh, let's open up a command prompt. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do it this way. I'm going to do it the cool way. Windows key X and then the letter A to open a command prompt as an administrator. Let me put in my domain administrator account. It's my top secret password. Shh, don't look. Well, you can look, but you're not going to know what it is. It's just the alphabet. <laughs> All right, so um, the command prompt loads. And what can you do here? Well, let's say I want to type IP config. Um, that's a, such a boring, <clears throat> boring command. Let's just type git mac. This is a command that gives you the MAC address of your interfaces. Um, and so you've got this command git mac. And what can you do with it? Well, I can select it, control C, and then I can do control V. Yes. And I can paste in other applications. I click open Microsoft Word um, or any other utility, and I can I can paste it there. I mean, it this is amazing because in Windows 7 and Windows Vista and Windows whatever you couldn't do that. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, see if show you what, you what what you can do here. Close out all these windows. Oh my gosh, these pop ups are driving me insane. I should probably read what it says, but I'm too lazy. All right, so come on, come on, load with me, load with me. I don't care about that. Oh, I just closed the application. All right. <laughs> it's one of those days today. So let's just open Notepad, and let me show you what I can do. Control V, bam, there you go. I can do get Mac all day. Now, why is that cool? Well, because in Windows 7, let's, it wasn't that way. Let's, in Windows 7, let's launch my Windows 7 uh, box. I'm going to open the command prompt. And I just like running things as an administrator. I, I don't know why. It's just a habit. Um, and now, let's go ahead and type git mac. Get the mac address. But notice that I can't click and drag across the words by default. I would have to right click the toolbar, the title bar, go to edit, and choose mark. Then from there, I would have to say, all right, I'm gonna, I am gonna, want this. But that wouldn't be it. Because if I press Control-V, it doesn't work. So I'd have to select it. Oops, I can't do it now. So I have to go back to the title bar, go back to Edit, go back to Mark, select this, type Control-C. But again, Control-V just does this. Ah! And 
it didn't actually copy anything. If I open up Notepad, you'll see it copied it, but it didn't copy it into the window. I can't control V into the window, which is like super, super annoying. So Microsoft fixed that with Windows 10. Woot. <laughs> All right, and so the last thing is you can actually um, scroll inactive windows by um, just hovering your, your mouse over the app. So let me give you an example of this. Let's, um, I don't know, let's just do this. Get a printout of something. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the uh, super secret command window, Windows key X. I'm gonna do A and then I'll just log in and now so we have two windows right this window and this window now notice I'm scrolling <laughs> the back window which is inactive just by moving my mouse over now let me show you what I, let me show you what I'm talking about so now we have two windows with scroll bars right let's stop the output in the first window Okay, so if I move my mouse over the first window, I scroll the first window. And if I move my mouse over the second window, which is the background window, I also scroll that window. That's pretty cool. You couldn't do that in previous versions of Windows. You know, in previous versions of Windows, that was not a possibility. So if I launched a second command prompt, here, you'll see I have content that I can scroll, but if I move over the second window, it still scrolls uh, the, the window in the foreground. So Microsoft fixed this um, in Windows 10. So you got to admit, I mean, little things like this are pretty cool. And those are four hidden features um, that you can do in Windows 10. You have your native PDF printer built into the operating system. You have timed screenshots with the new and improved snipping utility. You have uh, copy and paste. It finally comes to the command line. And finally, you can scroll inactive windows on hover just by hovering your mouse over them.